but you, you talked about newcomers and, and once again, kind of a lot of fresh faces, but uh, how excited are you to kind of just get this thing going in the fall? You know, since school started, we've been working at basically two a days. We went a month, you know, some 6 a.m. workouts and conditioning and then come back in the afternoon and work on your skill and your craft. And even though you got 24 new players and 24 returners, they've been working separate. You know, pitchers with pitchers, infielders, catchers, everybody's been separated. And to start today with everybody being together as one team, uh, this is a significant day for us. So we're, we're, we're excited to get things started. Butch, how do you feel about the group uh, rated fifth or sixth in the country coming in? And that doesn't include some of your transfers. Just how do you feel about that, those newcomers? Yeah, I just, I know uh, that we do have some good young players, regardless of somebody's putting us in the top five or 10 um, by publication. That's awesome. Every program strives for that, whether they say they don't do or not. Uh, what we know is we got good young players. Um, <clears throat> so that's exciting for me of where these guys are going to make an unbelievable impact on our program. Uh, probably the challenges for us will be, again, our schedule coming up. You know, it been benefited us last year. We won enough games to be in, the, again, top five, top ten of RPI. But we're going to have that type of schedule again. I even look at our non-conference. You know, we, we bring Georgia Tech back on the schedule for home and away. Uh, we have Indiana for a series here early. Second week of the season, we'll go to Southern California for a series. And then you just add in that that easy, easy 10 weeks of SEC. <laughs> <laughs> so right there, you already know that you're going to be challenged from a schedule standpoint. And what happened, I don't, I'm not sure we lose any talent from last year. Amazing group of ball players. Eight drafts, all eight had never been drafted before. The other significant piece is five pitchers taken in the top 12 rounds. That's significant because not everybody's always draft eligible to have five draft eligible pitchers going in the top 12 rounds. That's significant. And again, when you start bringing in a, a really good recruiting class, like I know we did, what I'm seeing is the same arm talent, but I'm not seeing the same experience, SEC experience that you can count on. You know, you think about the story of the Burkhart or the top reliever taken in the country. Well, that, that was a young man that walked on from Dothan, Alabama. That was a young man that the year prior uh, didn't finish the same, the games, didn't finish them the same way he did the year before to what he did last year. And it's all that experience and that past. So those are two things, the schedule, and then uh, <clears throat> knowing we still have a really good roster with that lack of experience on the mound. Uh, the third, I don't know if it's a secondary piece, but a third component would be uh, infielders. You know, you're excited about Cole Foster. In the last three years, I think we've taken, going all the way back, Ryan Bliss played second, then he played short. Brody Moore played second, then he played short. Looks like we're gonna do the same thing for the third year in a row where Cole Foster plays second, it's going to get a chance to play short. Uh, if we do that, you know, with Sonny being gone and Rambo going on the corners um, <clears throat> and Brody being gone at short, if Cole moves to short, then all four infield pieces are new. Even if a Bryson Ware comes back from the outfield to the infield, he had not played third base for us. Uh, Cam Hills played some first base, so that's the guy that you think maybe at, at first base. And hopefully some of the guys who were in the program last year step up. But Again, the recruiting, hopefully we can take care of the infield, but uh, that, that's the third piece is just all new infield position. Where we feel great, and I've already seen it this fall, is uh, Nate LaRue. Once he took the bull by the horns and got that catching position, he's continued to grow daily, weekly, monthly, calling a game, running a show, making the pitchers better, uh, arguably one of the best arms in the, in the league as far as shutting down a running game but his aptitude as a catcher to be within our system and know exactly what we want. He's done an amazing job. Uh, Ryan Bliss is, a, uh, Ryan Dial is a veteran in our program that's continued to just stay around and, and hang in there. And it just looks like some of that experience. He sticks out like a sore thumb now when you start lacking some experience. Ike Irish is one of those that you just, you're, <laughs> you just, you can't, you want to see him up at the plate. Uh, the catching skills are going to be great. Um, we feel great at catcher. Um, so, and in the outfield's the other place I feel great. I mean, you got a Bobby Pierce. We're so thankful for LaRue, Pierce, Howell, center fielder. We think he's as good as I'd want him to play center field. If I got to coach at this level for 20 more years, I would be happy if Casey Howell was a center fielder on that ball club. And we're going to get one more year out of him, and um, he's done an amazing
amazing job as well. Uh, you got Bello, Mike Bello back in, in left field, but you still got a Josh Hall uh, that's absolutely a defensive guy, arguably been the fastest guy on our roster that can help in that aspect, can be a defensive replacement that, that played a lot. He actually won a game bars at Baton Rouge and then <clears throat> had the injury and the surgery that knocked him out last year. And then, you know, I, I put a portal piece in there, Justin Kirby has been amazing, has been amazing from Kent State. He arguably might possess the most pop, you know, that we have on our team from these early indications. Uh, so we're excited about our outfield, excited about catcher. How are we going to develop a new infield? Um, and then, you know, behind Joseph and, and a couple of guys uh, like Sheehan that are returned, some veterans. What are these good, young, crop of exciting pitchers? Who's going to be ready to pitch? And who can pitch with limited experience? Those are things that I'm that we as a staff are talking about every day. And, but we start that journey today. That's what's exciting. The next 45 days, we're absolutely going to get to play. We're going to try to play as much as we possibly can. Every day we touch the field, we're going to try to make a huge portion of the day be surrounded about, about playing the game. And that's what these guys need more than anything. Is uh, Josh Hall, is he ready to go this fall, or is he going to take a little bit more time? To... Yeah, he's 100%. percent okay. happy to announce that. So since we got back in August, he's just like everybody else. And, has worked hard. It was a tough rehab and, and finished it in the summer and has been just like everybody else, as healthy as anybody from day one. But you mentioned that draft, and of course, you know, you guys have eight guys go, but, you know, some of your highly touted high school guys, too, seemed like they were considered top draft prospects, but, you know, they didn't hear their name called. Just how surprised were you to see that, and, and how rare is it to get, it was like four top 100 guys by at least perfect game rankings yeah. on campus? So all four of those could have signed. We knew this is a new draft and a new day. Uh, those families and student athletes, they made a decision that they wanted, I think they want to be big leaguers, uh, but they wanted to come through here. They want those uh, three years of development, staying with their peer group, playing at the highest level amateur baseball that you can get. I, I think they wanted this path. Um, and in years past, we've always had trouble getting that whole recruiting class to campus. This group stayed together, and I can already see how close they are now. And they're in some premium positions, you know, get, uh, a catcher that's probably, I don't know how to put value on people, but a million dollar plus player. You got two pitchers that are between 500,000 to a million. You got a center fielder that's valued probably over a million dollars. So they had to say no beforehand. They probably got great representation, great parents, and made a decision that this is the path they want to go with the intentions of trying to come develop and, and, and achieve that later on. But this was the route to get there by coming here, so we're thankful for that. And I think there's some more um, players that are quality players that can help us early. Drew Nelson's won four state championships in a row, right on the road here. Uh, Gavin Miller from Pennsylvania is a guy that, man, he might, he might go win a third base job. Uh, so we got some guys that are, that are real players, and it is, it is a top 10 class. You can fight for whatever you want to, but it's one of the 10 best classes. And it became that way because amazing young players and their families wanted to be here and made a commitment. I tip my hat to our staff. I think of Gabe Gross and uh, Carl Nunnemaker and Tim Hudson last year. Uh, the neat thing about that draft with those eight guys going in the top 20 rounds is none of the eight had ever been drafted before in their careers. Not out of high school, not from the junior college, or not from the four-year school they were at before. They had never been drafted in their careers. Uh, it signals development. And I think you had a good class that, that made it to school that were aware of that. And uh, so when the draft come, I think they're just they're going to wait a couple of years and, and try this route to be in their best route. They're betting this is the best route to be a big leaguer. So hopefully that they'll make a huge mark on, on Auburn uh, before they before they walk out the door. I know you've got a lot of experience with you know just kind of overseeing recruiting too. But just in your memory, I mean, uh, do you remember the last time I guess that you you managed to? bring in a whole class like that, especially with some top guys? or I just don't think we've done it here in recent yeah. memory because my brain do not go back too far. Um, boy from Selma, Gunnar, Gunnar Henderson is a perfect example. That's a guy that's an amazing player, loved Auburn, brother played in the program, was on our 19 World Series team. But, you know, when they come knock on your door and tell you big like that, it's it's hard. So um, I, I just think these guys are, are more equipped. They got more education than ever before. I do think of going back what really has been beneficial when these type players come to campus, the potential. And I think of like a Hunter Morris 
uh, when he came. It was eventually the 2010 SEC Player of the Year. He brought a whole recruiting class with him. Players want to play with great people and have a chance to, to win championships together. Uh, so I hope this signifies that, you know, next year's class is in the top 10. And the class after that is in the top 10 today if you go look and, and see where we rank. So uh, these, these good ones start hanging out together and, and they want to they want to get hooked up. So Carl has done an amazing job with our recruiting. These are amazing families. I think we've solidified, a, or at least our program, people know who we are. I think we're here long enough now where there's a real identity to our program. And just, you know, just keep waking up every day trying to work hard and make sure you're continuing to track that. So we're, we're in a pretty good place right now with some good families. And getting them a class, I don't want to understate it. It's a big deal. You oh, sorry. mentioned wanting to be at Auburn. Is that the definition of a guy like Bryson Ware? He's kind of like, where if you need me to go, I'll go. And, and what have you seen out of him? Yeah, yeah. Just, just a great athlete. All the tools in the world. Come to us as a junior college shortstop. Everybody knows that's been a plan of what we've done. We've recruited a lot of shortstops. And only one stays at short, but they moved to third. Tyler Miller was a guy that hit 16 home runs and played first base a couple years ago. Bryson went to the outfield and was absolutely a defensive replacement on this team last year on a good run, um, but, but him getting back. Uh, Bryson Ware stays in the fight. He has all the tools whatsoever. Playing time is probably not as much as he's wanted. The game's been, been tough coming from junior college to the Southeastern Conference, but people win if they stay in the fight. Bryson Ware has never shied away from staying in the fight. And if you, if you don't give up, you don't quit, and you believe people are treating you fair, and you stay hungry, he's on a pursuit. I, I would say Bryson Ware from the time we come back and hit campus, probably every second, every minute, hour, day, he, I think he's worked harder than anybody in the program. And as a coach, you want to see that pay off because he's absolutely stayed in the fight. And that is a great lesson for anybody. Uh, but. I, I, again, him and Gavin Miller, I, I'm so excited watching both of those play, and there's a couple others, but those two guys are going to battle it out starting today, and I'm, I'm looking forward to watching both of them play and compete. But, uh, man, a Bryson Ware, Ryan Dial, Cam Hill, guys that absolutely stayed committed to Auburn, loves Auburn, and stayed in the fight. I mean, I would do anything in my power. The players make the lineup out, and I never want to force that. But those three guys, if one, two, or three of them had an amazing year for us this year, I would absolutely be waving their flag every day because those guys have stayed in the fight and kept battling. Speaking of fights, are you going to put your name in the hat for AD? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to win today. I just want to win from 1.30 to, to 5 o'clock. Uh, you know, Alan, Alan's a friend. Um, uh, uh, Rich McGlynn has, I, I think every coach at Auburn has, Rich McGlynn has our full support right now. He absolutely has baseball's full support. Um, he's been here since the day I got here. He was actually here when I was an assistant coach back in 2006, seven, and eight. So uh, I know that family, and I know that's, a, that's an amazing family, and it does nothing but love Auburn. So my job, I think, today is to be whatever I can do to make the biggest impact and difference positively on Auburn. That's my job, even though I'm the baseball coach. And then how can I serve Rich McGlynn, uh, Chris Roberts? Uh, how can I support every student athlete, every coach, every program? That's absolute, absolutely what I'm going to do. And uh, whenever Auburn calls for me to do something, I'm absolutely willing to step up to the plate and do anything. But uh, right now, it's absolutely doing everything I can to support Rich McGlynn. So not AD? Not AD. Okay. <laughs> Butch, I know some falls that um, you like to rest certain pitchers just because of the load they've had over the summer or, or last spring. Is there anybody that's going to be limited this fall? You no, know, and the first one that jumps in my mind is like Joseph Gonzalez. It goes straight from Omaha and does 11 innings with the USA Baseball. Uh, I just, you're not going to get good looks at him. I'm going to pitch him once a week, either one or two innings. So, um, you know, Coach Rock's going to do an amazing job with their pitching staff, but there's still a framework of me being with them and knowing them. And we're going to, I, I still think Joseph needs to, to develop a few things. So we're going to work on a couple of things, but it's going to be more of a in the garage and then pop out once a week and throw one or two innings. So he's really at an innings limit for an amateur at this age in college for a year. But we're going to try to probably squeeze five to eight more innings out of him just so he can keep growing. Uh, it's hard when he goes back to Puerto Rico during that 60 days off to get the kind of work that he needs. Um, I remember back in the day we did that with uh, Casey Mize, when 
fall and Tanner Burns. But I think everybody, as of today, starting with first day of practice is up and running, including Joseph. And I think we'll just uh, be mindful of his innings. And all these guys without experience, and they're the ones that need to be eating innings right now. We just need to keep it going and keep Joseph growing. But uh, the, the game stuff is not as important as the practice stuff for me with Joseph. On that note, when you have guys like a, a, a deep college world series run and then so many guys can't go to the Cape, can't go to Northwoods, things like that, how does that change how y'all prepare for fall ball and how you guys get them integrated with what you want to do when you don't have that summer of structured competition for them? Yeah, I just think the good outweighs the bad. Mm -hmm. I just I think we have to make sure that we're taking care of the guys and that's why we did a whole month. I don't know if we're starting our fall later. We've done that, this the last few years. But that whole month allows us to get us uh, new guys coming in, guys that threw a whole bunch for us, mm -hmm. guys that did nothing, that just went to summer school. That month allows us to get everybody, allows us to get everybody back on the same page. Um, so I, I, we didn't push the summer agenda. I would say if you ask where it really affected us from what us running normal is we didn't push our position players like a Cole Foster to, to go out and keep playing. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we backed off a little bit in the summer, but as soon as August got here, we started doing the exact same template as we run last fall. But something had to give at some point because of the length of the season. We, we let go of the rope a little bit and, and, and allowed guys to get a little more recovery in the summer. But since school started August 16th, 17th, whatever it was, it's basically been the same template we run last year, the last few years. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thanks, Coach.